What's going on? We've got fact or fiction, reality versus false news, fake news. And it's stemming from a lot of different places now, almost like somebody has an agenda. But I want to show you this. I want to talk to you, the American people. I want to talk to you, the consumer, the real estate agent. I want to talk about truths and I want to talk about opinions. I want to show you these things. I've actually got five myths that I want to hopefully debunk. And I'm going to show you some videos. You're going to enjoy them and some articles. So let's get right into this one. The very first one that I really, really want to watch with you is this one. And look, I respect the office of the president. Uh, but in some cases, sometimes certain people say certain things that are false. And in this case, President Biden said something about real estate that was just unfortunately wrong. And here's what it has to say. Here we go. Listen to it with me. Turn up your volume. We're also making more affordable to refinance your home by eliminating title insurance fees on a federally funded mortgage back mortgages. That's, That's going to save folks as much as $1,000 a month. The federal government afforded it. In addition, last week, the Mass Association... I want to provide an annual tax credit that will give Americans $400 a month for the next two years as mortgage rates come down to put toward their mortgage when they buy the... Oh, here it is. It skipped. In addition, last week, the Mass Association of Realtors agreed for the first time that Americans can negotiate lower commissions when they buy or sell their own. That's number one. They negotiated, right? Americans negotiated this this supposedly new thing. And then... On a typical home purchase, that loan can save folks an average of $10,000 on the sale or purchase. I'm calling on realtors to follow through and lower the commissions to protect home buyers. All right. That's part one. If you want to read it, I've got it right here for you from the White House. Here it is. I put all the links inside of the YouTube channel so you can read this with me. We're not hiding anything. I want you to even read this. It says, in addition, last week, the National Association of Realtors agreed for the first time that Americans can negotiate lower commissions when they buy or sell their homes. Now, let me unshare this really quick. Obviously, that's a lie, right? Myth busted. Uh, from what we know, because it's a fact, everyone's been saying brokers were forced to do this. It's been around. It's always been negotiable. Always. And the fact that he went further in saying this, read this with me. And remember, this is not on my side political. I respect the president, the office of the president. Uh, it's just that when somebody says fake things, we've got to call them out. We've got to protect the truth. It says, I'm calling on realtors to follow through on lowering their commissions to protect home buyers. What is this? And, and it, it gets a little better because then I reached out to one of my friends who used to work for Fortune magazine. And he was on Fox News just being interviewed because he's got great data. His name is Lance Lambert. All right. And I've got a clip from that. That's Lance. He no longer is part of Fortune magazine. He runs his own company called Resi Club, all data based. And this is what he's got to say. Listen in. Are getting strange, but, I but I think it's fast becoming, becoming a political hot potato. potato. We, heard we heard President Biden, Biden kind of wagging his finger at these greedy agency agency agencies just the other day. Uh, uh, obviously, obviously, other kinds of moves, moves are happening nationally. nationally. And, and I read a note where you say these, these kind of things are mostly scapegoating. So, so taking into account mortgage rates, rates incomes, incomes, and house prices, affordability right now is strained at the worst levels in about four decades. And, and so when you have that, that and a lot of home buyers can't get in and, and a lot of homeowners can't sell and buy something else because they can't afford those new monthly payments, payments. What, what you, you see is a lot of political scapegoating. And, and so they're going, going after, you know, in some, in some municipalities, municipalities uh, short-term rentals, rentals uh, Airbnbs, uh, talking, talking about, about the institutional, institutional side of the market. market. 
and then also scapegoating real estate agents. NAR is going after, or DOJ is going after NAR. And, and, you know, you know they, they act, act like, like uh, lowering, lowering commissions would improve housing affordability, you know, you know going, going after soccer moms making 60000 a year, because uh, that's, that's the only job that works around their kids' schedule, schedule going after them. them. But, but at, at the end of the day, day if you, you look out at a lot, at a lot of the countries, countries that have lower commissions, commissions they, don't they don't have better housing affordability. affordability. These European, European countries actually have worse housing affordability. And that right there is a truth, because as we're going to show you in a little bit, it's been like that for years. Do you actually think, here's the other myth, that the settlement would lower the home prices? Is that, that's almost ridiculous. Like, are you being fooled? Who, who, who are you talking to here? Because if you go back in history, let, let's just do a little history lesson, everyone. We've got the wealth of nations. Uh, Adam Smith wrote it a long time ago, 1776, right? We've got, the wealth of nations. Yes, it has faults. I was going over them. But if we look at really the idea here, it's the whole title is the inquiry into the nature and causes of wealth of nations, commonly referred to as the wealth of nations, 1776. Here's what it is. The core of Smith's thesis was that humans natural tendency for self-interest or in modern terms, look out for yourself in results of prosperity. And then it talks about demand it talks about supply and you know what you always see that a seller a seller of a product of a home will never let go of their home if they know they can get a better price so when you use logic in this you understand that the truths were being told by the media in this case the new york times Powerful realtor group agrees to slash commissions to settle lawsuits. Look at this. Look at the narrative on this one. And this one's written by, just so you know, Deborah Kamen. And this isn't the first article that she's written that makes no sense because she doesn't have her facts right. But read it with me. National Association of Realtors will pay $418 million in damages and will amend several rules. Yes, several rules that housing experts say will drive down housing costs. In what world? In the United States? Because that's not how the economy works. And so the fact that she's also, if when you read this article, very vague about who these housing experts are, and if you dig deeper, you understand that these housing experts aren't really housing experts, right? Let's read this. Uh, housing experts said the deal and the expected savings for homeowners could trigger one of the most significant jolts in the U.S. housing market in 100 years, right? Sensationalizing it. This will blow up the market and would force a new business model, said Norm Miller, a professor emeritus at, uh, of, wait, there it is, emeritus of real estate at the University of San Diego. I'm like, okay, okay, I can, I can read that. That's not too bad. And then Economists estimate that commissions could now be reduced by 30%. Is that true? Yeah, you know what? Maybe. On the buyer side, could be. Especially as we start seeing new companies come out and offer a set fee, a lower fee on the buyer side. But here's the fake part. Driving down home prices across the board? Across the board of what? In what country? The last time I checked, Prices are set by supply and demand and interest rates, not by real estate agents charging a commission in that price. There's no way sellers are going to drop that difference in price just because a real estate agent isn't making the commission. It's stupid and it's fake news. So there you go. That's myth number two. Now, the other one that I wanted to talk to you about is over here. Uh, First of all, if you haven't read this book, go pick it up. Color of Law, A Forgotten History of How Our Government Segregated America. Amazing book. Five stars, 17,000 reviews. You want to read a good book on real estate that tells you the truth and opens your eyes? Read that one. I wanted to touch on something Milton Friedman said that I highlighted. And for those of you who don't know who Milton Friedman is, an American economist, Google him. You'll find him amazing YouTube videos. But he said, um, he says, espouse this ideology 
of greed when he said, the world runs on individuals pursuing their separate interests. He asked, is there some society you know that doesn't run on greed? Homo economicus? The rational self-interest being that represents standard economic theory, benefits society only to the extent that he maximizes his own utility. And that, that is reality. When you look at what the New York Times wrote out, because in the New York Times, it continues to feed us and the consumer and everyone else lies. We go through this at the bottom and look, it gets it a little bit better. So some experts said the shift on commission structure and the billions of dollars that would flow into the housing market as a result could spark a recovery in the housing market, going so far as to say that it could be as significant as the 1930s New Deal. A flurry of legislation and executive orders signed by Franklin D. Roosevelt designed to stabilize and rebuild the nation's economic recovery following the Great Depression. But here's the here's the catch. Look at where they're going with this. This included a, a better housing program, which was designed to make housing and mortgage more accessible and led to the creation of the Federal Housing Administration. Now, if you think about where we're going with this article, she's saying that, hey, prices are going to come down. This is going to create such an amazing opportunity for buyers and for sellers. And that, that right there, we're being sold a bag of garbage. That is not true. That is not how our world works. So you have to think. Think what's actually going to happen. And I've been through this in the last video where we dug deeper into what's happening with first-time home buyers. And first-time home buyers, they've decreased from 50% in 2010 to now less than about 30% of all first time home buyers. Why? Because affordability is a real issue. You listened to what Lance Lambert had to say. He says, you think we're bad right now? Look at, look at Europe, they're worse. This isn't going to help anything when it comes to affordability. So don't listen to that narrative. Look at history and study it. Now, the next one that is is also coming up. I've got this one right now. Option, what I'm hearing is, hey, Tristan, because I'm getting some sellers calling me. I don't have to pay buyer commission anymore. It's crazy. Uh, this is an amazing new rule that was not around before. In fact, it's going to prohibit us sellers from paying a buyer's agent. No, it's false. It's not true. First of all, you didn't have to pay a buyer's agent. You didn't have to. You could have just gone directly to get a buyer through an agent. Or, you know what? You never had to hire a real estate agent. You could have done it on your own. There's a good percentage of homes that are sold off market, off the MLS, without a real estate agent. You're not required, and you never have been required, to use a real estate agent. You can do this on your own. There are reasons you hire one. In fact, if we go back to that article, Right, and we scroll all the way to the top. You're gonna to see some comments right here. And there are a couple of great ones, by the way. There's this one who says, hey, I have 40 years of experience as a, let me highlight it for you so you can read it with me. It says, I have 40 years of experience as practicing real estate attorney. It seems to me that most of these comments are made by people who do not know what is involved in the sale and purchase of a house. Having worked with many real estate agents and brokers, I can say that most of them, not all, like any other industry, there is a small percentage that gives everyone else a bad name. That's true. Are, most of them are very hardworking individuals. In order to make a living as a real estate agent, you're working 24-7, 365. The phone rings and it's answered, whether 9 and 5 or at 11 p.m. Well, let's continue. There's another one right over here by Jill. She says, this feels like a mixed blessing to me. When I sold my home of 20 years, uh, 20, 20 years, what is it? 20 years, eight years ago. Got it. There it is. I bought a home 500 miles away and only then put my house on the market. My realtor took care of all repairs, having carpet, 
pulled up and hardwood floors refinished, getting all inspection repairs done and staging all from a distance. All I had to do was write the checks to the service providers who had who had pay on completion arrangements with her because of pre-existing relationships and establishment of trust. She is one who earned her commission. So you look at this, not only was it never, it was never required for you to do this. You don't have to hire an agent. You don't have to pay a buyer's agent. But when you use the right agent, things like that happen. So Nobody is forcing anybody to use a real estate agent. Nobody is now prohibiting from using a real estate agent. The other piece to this is that the amount of money being thrown at real estate agents for some reason was fixed like like CNN had written earlier is fake. It's not 6%. It never was. It was never set. It was always negotiable. So when you start looking at this, the amount of money that's being offered to agents, if there's going to be amount an amount offered to buyer's agents, simply can't go on the MLS, which is the service that agents go to, to look at where homes are, uh, what homes are available, what's listed, what the price is, all the details, just can't be listed there. You can negotiate it either before, when you submit the offer, or in other ways. And so when you look at that, you start looking at reality. And that's the, de- that's the fourth myth that, hey, you can no longer pay another agent. And when you look at this deeper, I think the key to this is that this settlement, this settlement is going to change some things for sure. But a lot of the things that are said to be changed are not what's being, what's the, what the actual truth is. And that's the challenge. That I want you to read past all the headlines. I want you to dig through and find out what's really actually happening. And who is this actually going to benefit? Who is this actually going to hurt? And when you start realizing the truths, you start realizing that, oh, got it. Um, Nothing really changed too much. But the things that changed or are going to change because it's a proposed settlement. The things that are going to change could be in some ways detrimental to some parts of the way real estate works. The fact is we don't know. We don't know where we're heading. And there was a great article that my friend Jay Thompson also shared with me. I want to share this with you because this has, uh, this was from the Herald Tribune. I put it into the YouTube description. It says, Real Estate Pro says, don't believe National Association of Realtors, right? There we go. And here you have all of the, the main myths that we, some of them we went through. The settlement forces brokers to reduce their compensation. False. Easy. Settlement will, for the first time, allow sellers to no longer pay compensation for an agent, bringing the buyer. False. There you go. And you can read it there. Settlement prohibits sellers from paying a commission. We already know that that's false. Uh, settlement will serve... Uh, to meaningfully lower prices. That's definitely false. We went over that. And history shows that that's definitely false. Whoever is pushing that narrative is tricking you. Settlement is a win for buyers who will now be able to negotiate the fee uh, for representation. Look, that one's in the middle. I have to say that one is in the middle because I don't know which type of buyer, which we went over a few days ago. A settlement will result in significant restitution to the consumer uh, who who were harmed. And here's the truth, because I'm going to take you to a different section here. If I look at this section right here, and this is the Daily News, which I also put in the link. It says, assuming legal fees consume one third of the settlement that leaves just under 300 million for home sellers or just over $13 a piece. And if it extends to a higher amount to 2 billion, it's going to be $63 per seller. And you look at what the firm is getting that represented the sellers. Here we go. So you can understand uh, what reality is, right? I'm going to highlight it for you. Uh, There it is. So the firms for Sitzer, Burnett and Muller's plaintiffs with proposed settlements from anywhere, Remax and Keller Williams are asking federal court for $82 million. 
and you go down, you've got some quotes from one of the attorneys. If there's additional, here, let me highlight this one so you can read it. If there's additional money that's collected by way of judgment or additional settlements, the law allows us to make additional fee applications. So when you look at the whole picture, you start seeing the reality of what's going on. You understand now how the economy works a little bit. There's another video I did when I dove deep into how uh, it was quantity theory of money, where because we printed out so much money, we threw a lot of money, it caused some type of inflation, inflation that we've seen prices go up, right? It's not because real estate agents charge commission. That's a joke. And that's uh, it's hilarious. So when you're looking at this, please go deeper. Don't just fall for the headlines. I know that a lot of Americans just read the headlines and then just share it with somebody else. I want you to go deeper. Oh, and, and this only benefits you. I don't want the media to continue to treat you like an idiot because you're not. We're not. Go deeper. Read more. And I'll talk to you soon.